I want to bring in Senator Rand Paul, Republican from Kentucky. He's on the Foreign Relations Committee as well. Senator, welcome. Good morning. Glad to be with you. So you heard the Secretary of State uh, break news this morning that the evidence, the intelligence suggests now this was a sarin gas attack uh, at the hands of the Assad government. Uh, the Secretary saying, as he just did, the case um, is building and will continue to build. Is that enough for you to now vote to authorize the president to use force? No, and I think it's a mistake to get involved in the Syrian civil war. And what I would ask John Kerry is, you know, he's famous for saying, you know, how can you ask a man to be the last one to die for a mistake? I would ask John Kerry, how can you ask a man to be the first one to die for a mistake? I would ask John Kerry, do you think that it's less likely or more likely that chemical weapons will be used again if we bomb Assad? I'll ask him if it's more likely or less likely that we'll have more refugees in Jordan or that Israel might suffer attack. I think all of the bad things you can imagine are all more likely if we get involved in their Syrian, it, it, the Syrian civil war. It's interesting because uh, Secretary Kerry was, was pretty blunt, and I've got his remarks right here, talking about what you and, and your colleagues will do in the Senate and in the House. He said, I don't believe my former colleagues in the United States Senate and the House will turn their back on our interests, on the credibility of our country, on the norm with respect to the enforcement of the prohibition against the use of chemical weapons, which has been in place since 1925. So you you speak about the bad things that will happen. He says for you and others not to authorize force is really hurtful to U.S. credibility. Well, the one thing I would say that I'm proud of the president for is that he's coming to Congress in a constitutional manner and asking for our authorization. That's what he ran on. His policy was that no president should unilaterally go to war without congressional authority, and I'm proud that he's sticking by it. But you asked John Kerry whether or not he'll stick by the decision of Congress, and I believe he waffled on that and wobbled and wasn't exactly concrete that they would. But absolutely, if Congress votes this down, we should not be involved in the Syrian war. And I think it's at least 50-50 whether the House will vote down involvement in the Syrian war. You think it's 50-50? It's that close? You don't think that this is a, a compelling case that's been made and that Congress will follow suit? In the House, I think the Senate will rubber stamp what he wants, but I think the House will be much closer vote. And there are a lot of questions we have to ask. I think it's pretty apparent there was a chemical attack, but we now have to ask, will, are we going to go after chemical weapons with our bombing? Everything I read says that we're unlikely to bomb chemical sites because of the potential for civilian damage and civilian loss of life. The other question is all of the bad things that are going on. One of the bad things that's going on is that hundreds of thousands of people have gone into Jordan as refugees. If we begin a bombing campaign in Syria, I think that accelerates. So it accelerates the misery. If we get involved, you know, people say, well, 100,000 people have died. We must act. Well, if our weapons get involved and we get involved, do you think more people will die or less people? But I think the war may escalate out of control. And then we have to ask ourselves, who is, who is on America's side over there? If the rebels win, will they be American allies? Assad's definitely not an American ally, but I'm not convinced anybody on the Islamic side, the Islamic rebels, will be American allies. It seems to me, Senator, that what the president is saying in this a drafted resolution that he'd like Congress to authorize, that the United States must draw a line at the use of chemical weapons, any weapons of mass destruction in war, that you simply cannot allow it, and that if we strike Assad and he uses them again, I heard Secretary Kerry say that the United States might strike Assad again if he uses the weapons. Why not draw that line in the sand as the president wants you to and say, we can't allow WMD to be used? I think the line in the sand should be that America gets involved when American interests are threatened. I don't see American interests involved on either side of this Syrian war. I see Assad, who has protected Christians for a number of decades, and then I see the Islamic rebels on the other side who have been attacking Christians. I see Al-Qaeda on one side, the side we would go in to support. And I see it to be murky, and I don't see a clear-cut American interest. I don't see either party that is victorious, if either party is victorious, being an American ally. You are a United States senator. You may, at some point, be a, a, a candidate for the presidency. How would the United States look if the president says, I have decided to take military action, I want Congress to give me authority, and Congress does not give that authority? 
I think it would show that he made a grave mistake when he, he drew a red line. I think uh, a president should be very careful about setting red lines he's not going to keep. But then again, when you set a red line that was not a good idea in the beginning with, and now you're going to adhere to it or try to show your machismo, I think then you're trying to save face and really adding bad policy to bad policy. Your colleagues in the Senate, like Senator McCain and Senator Graham, you've tangled with them on some of these matters before. They've made it very clear that the only resolution that they would support must go farther. It must essentially really push Assad from power. Secretary Kerry is likening uh, Assad to Saddam Hussein and Adolf Hitler. Uh, you don't see a vital American interest despite those arguments. No, but I think they make an interesting and a valid point. If we're going to launch cruise missiles and it's not going to affect the outcome, basically what they're pushing for, and my interpretation of the current Obama administration's policy, is they want to fight for stalemate, then they want a negotiated settlement. They think that Assad has the upper hand now. They want to balance it out. But what I've told them is I'm not sending my son, your son, or anybody else's son to fight for stalemate. You know, when we fight, we fight when we have to. But I see things in a very personal basis. You know, I see a young John Kerry who went to war, and I wish he remembered more of how awful war is and that it shouldn't be a desired outcome. Neither are chemical weapons, and they should absolutely be condemned. But I think the failure of the Obama administration has been we haven't engaged the Russians enough or the Chinese enough on this and I think they were engaged I think there's a possibility Assad could already be gone the Russians have every reason to want to keep their influence in Syria and I think the only way they do is if there's a change in government where Assad is gone but some of the same people remain stable that would also be good for the Christians I think the Islamic rebels winning is a bad idea for the Christians and all of a sudden we'll have another Islamic state where Christians are persecuted and so I think really the best outcome for all the major powers would be a uh, a peaceful transition in government and Russia could influence that if they told Assad no more weapons Senator Paul we'll leave it there thank you for your views this morning